Wow, it's time for another show full of tips and ideas from the sales growth leadership expert, Dean Akers. Known for his experience in hyper-growing companies and creating cultures for high-performance teams, here's Dean. Well, welcome to your um, Sales and Leadership Ninja Show. I'm your head ninja, Dean Akers, and each week bringing you a rant to stimulate your thinking in the realm of sales or leadership. Today's show is protecting and energizing your biggest asset, your people. Now, this applies to leaders out there, and also, quite frankly, if you're in sales, I think it applies to you also, because your biggest asset is your support teams, and this works for them too. So, we're challenged today. Unemployment is at an all-time low. While this is great for the economy, this is a challenge for you as a leader. And so for you as a leader, you have to take a look at two key items in your organization, team turnover and team productivity. So what I'm going to share today is some of the things that have worked for me over the years in all my companies that has allowed me to hyper grow them, uh, almost virtually have no team turnover and ex crazy cool team productivity. And these things I'm sharing with you today are probably more applicable today than they were 25, 30 years ago when I really started. Actually, uh, uh, started almost 40 years ago, embarrassingly to say today. But it's always been applicable. So I'm going to recommend uh, about four things today for you as takeaways. <clears throat> and they've always worked for me. Operative word for you today, if you're in leadership, from me is always. They have always worked. So the first thing I've always done when I go into an organization or when I have an organization, I do what I call a climate questionnaire. Now, if you want to get a copy of a climate questionnaire, both the questionnaire and what the results look like, I'll be happy to send that to you. If all you have to do is email me at help at adjunctco.com. That's help at adjunctco.com. And I will I will send you a copy of this climate questionnaire, no charge, no nothing, and I'll show you. So what is a climate questionnaire? Well, this is a blind document that I've given to all my associates in every company I've ever had. And in my case, I do them every six months. When I go into a company, I do it where we do it as an intro and we have everybody do it. Now, now I'll tell you a couple key things about it. When I first started doing it, it was all self-addressed envelopes and it was mailed to a, a, an address, and then it was tabulated, and it was all anonymous, which is the way I wanted it. About eight years ago, when technology came out, I automated it so you could take it online. I found my numbers dropped of participation because people, quite frankly, don't trust online, even though their name or anything wasn't tied to it. So I've gone back to the manual system. This is so valuable to you that doing it manually is academic. So what it is, is there's 10 dimensions, and, it, and, it, and it's stuff like communication, pay, uh, just all kinds of different things in these 10 dimensions. And they have where they think the company is, 1 to 10, and where they would like it. Now, the interesting thing is, is people are honest with this. And CEOs will go, well, they're all going to pick 10s. They actually don't. And I've been doing them, I probably have done I don't know, 10,000 of them that have responded over the years. And I can tell you, it is always interesting how your team responds back. Today, I'm going to share with you on today's rant is what the top three things are that people have statistically responded back in the thousands of them I've done over the years in all the different companies I've owned and or companies I've helped. So, the number one thing that your employees and team members feel that the biggest delta between that where they want it and where they think it is, guess what number one is? Well, it's a feeling of being in on things. A feeling of being in on things. That means communication. That means letting them know what's going on. And what's amazing today, even more than ever, if you look at the generational thing, being in on things is really important to your newer employees. It means share with them everything. Well, they don't need to know everything, Dean. Uh, yeah, they do. 
And the reason they do is the more transparency you have, the more trust it creates and the higher productivity and the higher team satisfaction you're going to have. It. It's just mathematics. So number one I've found in doing thousands of these is a feeling of being in on things. Number two, interestingly enough, is a feeling of appreciation. A feeling of appreciation. That's number two. And it's always number two statistically on these thousands. Now, probably what you're thinking, normally when I ask CEOs what the number one motivation is, everybody always says money. Money is always in the bottom half of the 10 dimensions, just as a point of reference. So a feeling of appreciation. We're going to talk about some techniques to that. And then number three, and, the, and I never go past number three because in my businesses and all the companies I help, all I ever work on is going to number three. And so it, when I get to number three, it's pretty easy. So I'm looking at number three and number three is being treated fairly and equally. So that's a pretty easy thing for me to put my arms around. And this is especially if you have leaders in your company, <clears throat> this is important that you understand all the personality types and make sure you appear and are in fact inclusive. Sometimes there's <coughs> popularity, people feel other people are given special attention, and they maybe really aren't. So it's just something to be aware of. So in my case, all I ever manage back is to the top three dimensions, and I do it every six months. So those dimensions will change somewhat. And I look at the delta, and as it comes down, even if they stay the same, I know my climate's getting better. The second thing in leadership to, to energize your biggest asset is special touches. Now, this is a crazy tip. When I share this with people, they go, really? Really? And I got to tell you, this has been epic for me. And a couple crazy tips of special touches. When I have my teams, I handwrite a birthday note to every team member on their birthday. I still write 50 to 100 every week. And I still send birthday notes to a lot of my f former team members. Also, when I'm in a company as a CEO, I write an anniversary note to them and and also on the anniversary of their uh, tenure with the company. And I send all these handwritten, hand-addressed, stamped, enveloped notes to their home. Notes to their home. It just means a lot. Somebody goes, well, couldn't I send them an email or can we have a, 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 a company that does that? I go, no, this is your biggest asset. You want to energize it and protect it. So this handwritten note, and I've had hundreds and hundreds of employees, as many as 500, do the math. I'm writing, I'm doing this every month. I'm writing like crazy, birthday and anniversary. It's that important if you're a leader. It's that important. I got to tell you, how do I know it was important? Years ago, I had one of my guys who wanted to quit one of my companies, and I he I get a call from one of our regional people say he's quitting uh, because of more money from a competitor. Okay, tell him we love him. Blah blah blah. That night, true story, I get a call at my house from his wife saying, Dean, so and so came home today and said he's leaving the company. He's going to work with so and so for more money. I wanted to call you as a representative of our family and ask, can he stay? And I said, of course he can stay. Of course he can stay. And she goes, I just want to tell you, call you because we told him money's not that much more important to us as it is for working in the company he's in, which is working with you guys, the way you treat us, the way you treat him. It's much more important. So can he stay? And I said, absolutely. That's not the story. That's not the story. About six months later, I was up in that area, and I was going to spend the night up there because I had a meeting the next day, and it was the last visiting with him, and he goes, hey, you got time to come by the house for a beer? And I said, absolutely. I've got a hotel room up here. I'll come by for a quick beer. I go by his house. His wife comes to the door and says, hey, welcome, welcome. Come sit down in the room. We'll get you a beer and some appetizer. We'll sit down and talk. I walk in, or they take me into his living room. I sit down on the couch. And on his coffee table, you can't make this up, on his coffee table was one of my handwritten notes in a frame. A handwritten note I had sent him framed and sitting on his coffee table. 
That was a true trophy to he and his family. That's how important special touches are. That's how important special touches are. And it has a twofold impact. It reduces your in, it, turnover, which is protecting and energizing your biggest asset. The other intrinsic value that's unbelievable is my team always is my biggest recruiters. So anytime I want to grow, all I got to do is say, we need 10 more people. And mysteriously, people show up, and they're always the highest quality people because who's vetting them? Who's bringing them in? Who's recommending them? Your team. This isn't a recruiter. This isn't a running ads. Anytime I've wanted to grow my companies, I've grown them with my teams bringing people in that they believe would be an asset to our company. Do you think that is protecting and energizing your biggest asset and getting a return? Absolutely. Then third, and this is very subtle, but it's very cool, is I get everybody a business card. Everybody in the team gets a business card. Now I have people go, well, we do that, Dean. We get our people business cards. I go, so your accounting lady has a business card? Oh, she doesn't have one. She doesn't need one. I go, that's not everybody. Everybody means if you have somebody doing janitorial work, anybody within your company gets a box of 500 business cards. Why? I give them to my team members individually. Even when I have a 100, 200, 300 employees, I make sure we're giving them to them. Our regional management is giving them to them and explaining to them the importance of them having this business card. They're a representative of our company in any and everything they do. What this does is it really shows the importance and they feel and they're proud. I actually had some guys one time when I had a construction company and I gave them business cards. I had two grown adults start crying. Start crying. I go, what are you crying about? And these guys were laborers. They said, nobody's ever cared about us enough to give us our own business cards. And they had been in the business for 15, 20 years. So it is a big impact. And it shows the importance of their impact on your company. Fourth is get us personal CR, personnel CRM. This is an electronic customer relationship manager, but get one for yourself or your company that has just your personnel. You might have an HR system, great, but you want to make sure if you have it that it has key items in it, like obviously their birthday, their wedding anniversary, hobbies, everything you can put in there so you can sort and find and see and build things to create touches for them to, to know you care because you genuinely care. So these, these are cultural things that will help you protect and energize your best biggest asset. And once you have a, a, a relationship of caring for your people, in fact, I always tell people your HR is human relationships. Once you use HR for what it really is, human relations, and you use your company and create these human relations where you know their weddings, births, births, kids stuff, all this, and you connect the dots with everybody, and that's part of your company culture, it will be insane. So get your survey done, do your special touches, get your business cards, and get your personal CRM. If you want an outline of the Sales Basics Three Circle Program or the Organizational Climate Questionnaire, all you got are the CEO physical. Just reach out at help at adjunctco.com. Help at adjunctco.com. Your mission is to take these four items, implement them in your company, and go out and protect and energize your biggest asset, your people. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. Subscribe today to our podcast and send questions or thoughts to help at deanacres.com. Also, visit us at www.deanacres.com to listen to prior shows and view helpful videos. Also, great tips to download. Thanks again. See you next week.